the oldest pyramid on our planet and a unique ancient book that differs not only in its shape. Where did the Italian language come from in Rome and where is the most mysterious pyramid in Egypt? Check out this video for all this and more. Hi friend, you're on the Kurtop channel. Excavation Tomb of a Warlord in Egypt Excavations were carried out near the Giza Plateau in the archaeological area of Abasur. Czech archaeologists have unearthed a tomb that turned out to belong to a powerful Egyptian commander who lived 2,500 years ago. Four months before the discovery of the tomb, archaeologists discovered an embalming cache for via bra commander Mary Neve. The researchers suggested that the tomb itself should be located somewhere nearby, and they were right. The tomb was indeed nearby and it belonged, like the cache itself, to a high-ranking person, the commander of foreign soldiers named Waibra Marinif. The military leader served during the period of the end of the 26th beginning of the 27th First Dynasties. This position at that time was ambiguous, since the troops led by Waibra Neef consisted entirely of mercenaries. This is confirmed by the fact that in Egypt, in internecine wars, were already used soldiers from outside. The main well of the found tomb was 6 meters deep, and the size of the tomb itself was about 18 by 18 meters. The burial wall consists of several parts, the lintels between which are carved into the rock. Inside the main wall there is another one, smaller and deeper. It was used as the main burial place. The outer sarcophagus was made of two huge blocks of white limestone, and the inner one was made of, of basalt stone carved into the shape of a human body with text from the Book of the Dead inscribed on it. But the second sarcophagus, to the surprise and disappointment of scientists, turned out to be broken and completely empty. They found only an amulet in the form of a scarab beetle. The tomb was looted during late antiquity and two ceramic vessels were found in it, which were dated to the 4th 5th centuries AD. There was no mummy in the grave and some items for burial were missing, which were usually located on the western and eastern side of the sarcophagus. The very fact of finding a hiding place for embalming in the tomb gave archaeologists the opportunity to learn something about the life of a commander of troubled times. A close examination of the tomb suggests that it was not quite finished, perhaps the death of Y. Bra Mary Neef was unexpected. Mosaic depicting the Twelve Labors of Hercules during excavations in the ancient city of Sidra in the Alania region, about 164 square meters of floor mosaics depicting the 12 labors of the mythological hero Hercules were discovered. The remains of the ancient city of Sidra are located near Alania, the most famous tourist center of Turkey. The ancient city is located 20 kilometers east of the city center. The mosaic depicts very well-preserved scenes called 12 labors of Hercules. The figures are human-sized, in the sense we have before us a unique object of antiquity. Well-preserved mythological scenes add value to the work. The floor mosaic is 7.9 meters wide and 22 meters long, believed to have been made in the 2nd century AD, and covers an area of about 164 square meters. Where did the Italian language come from in Rome? Today, Latin is more of a dead language than a commonly used one, and in Great Rome they spoke exactly it. Today it is used only at a service in the Roman Catholic Church. The word Latin comes from the name of the historical region, Latium. This is the region where the future Romans lived and then in the first millennium BC, the local tribe was called the Latins. Rome was the capital of the region and when the Latins successfully defeated their neighbors and brought them into one whole, the new state became known as the Roman Empire, but the language remained tribal, Latin. Roman influence spread and with it, the Latin language. In the imperial provinces, 
Texas, Latin underwent changes and the so-called Paul Latin appeared, a colloquial form of the language. The native Latins called it the language of the plebeians, but already in the 2nd century AD, Serma Vulgaris became the main one and gradually replaced the classic version. The whole group of modern Romance languages in the countries of Western Europe was formed on the basis of precisely that very popular Latin. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire in Italy, difficult times came. In almost every corner of the Axe Empire, its own dialects of popular Latin began to be created. The same thing happened in the Apennines, Sicilian, Neapolitan, Lombard and others. The dialects were similar, just as the Belarusian, Russian and Ukrainian languages are similar, but it was no longer Latin. There was no political integrity, there was no common denominator. Italian began to emerge in the 14th century. This was due to the general cultural flourishing with the works of Boccaccio, Dante and Petrarch. They were all from Florence and they wrote in the Florent Tuscan language. Their work became very popular in Italy and therefore the Tuscan language became canonical. And when Italy was united in the 19th century, literary Tuscan became the official language. This is how the Italian we know appeared. Prehistoric Artist Trail Archaeologists from Moscow State University have discovered a path of a prehistoric artist in the Kapova cave. About 19,000-17,000 years ago, he walked through the hole of Chaos and marked his route with small strokes and drops of red paint. Similar finds had previously been made only at a few monuments of Paleolithic art in France and Spain. In the Berziansky district of the Republic of Bashkordasen, on the right bank of the Belaya River, there is a Kapova cave, Shulgan Tash, which is a multi-level karst cavity. Back in 1959, archaeologists discovered wall paintings left by Paleolithic artists in it. Radiocarbon analysis has shown that people visited this cave around 19,500-16,000 years ago. Exploration of the Kapova cave continues today. In addition to new images, archaeologists have found so-called treasures in this sanctuary, which are accumulations of powdered pigment of different colors, from black and yellow to deep red. The excavations also yielded numerous finds, among which were hearth, stone and bone tools, a clay fat lamp, decorations made from tusks and shells of mollusks, as well as osteological materials. In the largest hole, Hole of Chaos of Kapova Cave, archaeologists found a root marked with small spots and smears of red paint. It passed through almost the entire hole, from the panel horses and signs with the drawing of a camel to the figure of a zoo anthropomorph. In addition to the spilled paint, archaeologists found a fine powder not yet diluted with water for its manufacturer. In addition, among the finds were deliberately painted red stones. The Most Mysterious Pyramid in Egypt this nondescript pyramid is perhaps one of the most mysterious objects in Egypt. We are talking about the so-called Layered Pyramid, or Pyramid of Kaaba. It is located just a few kilometers from the well-known Pyramids of Giza, and if the flow of tourists does not stop to the latter, then it will not be possible to approach the Puff Pyramid. Suddenly, in 1964, a large area around it was declared a military zone and a military base was located there. Any research in this area is prohibited. The strangest thing is that even world-famous archaeologists are denied the study of this mysterious structure. The British Egyptologist John Perrin first mentioned the layer pyramid in 1839. The pyramid had a square base with a side length of 84 meters. Structurally, this is a step pyramid like for example the famous Chosa pyramid. However, the upper part was destroyed and only two steps remained the height of which is 17 meters. Based on the proportions of the steps, there were five of them, and the height of the pyramid was 42-45 meters. In 1885, Gaston Maspero tried to find the entrance to it, but did not find it. He looked for it from the north side, as in all the Great Pyramids, but it was not there at all. It was not until 1900 that the archaeologist Alexander Barsanti discovered the true entrance from the east side of the pyramid. He got inside and was the first to inspect the underground structures under the pyramid, which turned out to be empty. No burial, no afterlife 
live offerings, no colorful frescoes or wall paintings, nothing. In 1905, an interesting incident occurred, thanks to which Alexander Barsanti suggested that there were still unknown rooms under the room with the stone mine. A heavy downpour began. Water through an open vertical shaft began to quickly flood the interior under the pyramid. For some time, the water level remained in one place, and then suddenly dropped sharply and settled at the same level. It was estimated that about 380 cubic meters of water went somewhere. Santi suggested that the water found a gap and flooded some unknown rooms where, perhaps, the real tomb is located. But it was not possible to verify this. The First World War began and then Barsanti died. For many years, the research was completely forgotten, and then all access to the pyramid was suddenly restricted. Now scientists believe that the pharaoh died too early and they simply did not have time to complete the pyramid and it was abandoned. Ancient Book 6 and 1 1. Technology has gone so far that we do not consider it a great achievement when a device the size of one paper book can contain hundreds, if not thousands, of different texts. But humanity in the 21st century did not come up with the idea to combine several books into one. Medieval book historian Eric Quackle points out, for example, the Dosa Dos back to back binding that existed in the 16th and the 17th centuries, which made books similar to Siamese twins in that they were two different entities connected to each other. A 16th century book containing at least six different books in a single binding. There are all religious texts printed in Germany in the 1550s and 1570s, and each of them closes with its own tiny clasp. Four or five centuries ago, such a book would no doubt have made the same or even greater impression on its readers than the most modern portable consumer electronics impresses us today. But when the internet discovered Quackle's post, it became clear that this six-in-one religious device fascinates us almost as much as a brand new, never-before-seen digital device. Given that in the Middle Ages, the literacy rate ranged from 5 to 10 percent of the population, only a select few from the upper strata of society and religious castes used books. So who would want six stories held together by one multi-hinged cover like this one? Egyptian Pharaoh Akhenaten Behind the mysterious name Akhenaten hides a unique historical figure who has the status of almost a deity. We are talking about the notorious pharaoh reformer Amenhotep IV, better known as Akhenaten, or in translation, pleasing the god Aten. Reigning during the 18th dynasty, the Egyptian ruler is best known for his commitment to religious and philosophical reforms, which he implemented during his reign. In violation of the cults and beliefs that existed before that time, he ordered the name of the previous supreme god Amun-Ra to be erased from all scriptures and declare the remaining deities non-existent. He proclaimed the god of the sun, or Aten, the only and supreme. In honor of him, he changes his name to Akhenaten. The revolution doesn't end there. The pharaoh founds a new capital of Egypt, Akhetaten, and the city is also named after a single deity. Speaking about the family, Akhenaten is known not only as the father of Tutankhamun, but also the husband of Queen Nefertiti, popular for her unearthly beauty. She is famous not only for her appearance, but also for the fact that she ruled Egypt as a pharaoh, which was extremely rare for women of that time. Akhenaten differed from other pharaohs, both in his reformist thinking and in his unusual appearance. He was rather thin, small, with a strongly elongated face and an elongated skull. It was because of the appearance appearance of his hat that many rumors and speculations spread, among which was the theory that he was an alien, and not an ordinary representative of the human race. Nefertiti was also depicted with an unusually elongated skull. Some historians attribute this to the alleged application of the method of artificially lengthening the skulls. Of course, there is also the idea that the depiction of Akhenaten's appearance is exaggerated and unrealistic. On the other hand, some studies suggest that the pharaoh 
Kuro suffered from genetic diseases that affected his appearance. It has even been argued that these bodily ailments have something to do with the female form of Akinanan's body, a white pelvis with fatty deposits, a stomach, and a large chest. The deaths of Akinanan and Nefertiti is also the subject of controversy, theories, and conjecture. The official tombs of both were found empty. Others are said to have been found, and there is also speculation that one of the bodies found during the excavations is Akhenaten's. However, there is no categorical statement about the causes of death and burial. And what do you think? Was Akhenaten an alien, or is it fiction, for the deification of this person? Ancient Belt Book The Belt Book is a small volume that can be plugged into a belt. The book has a knot, which is part of the leather cover, which allows you to hold the book on your belt. Why was the knot at the bottom of the leather continuation of the cover? This is due to the fact that the book was hung upside down so that the owner could take it and read it at any time, without having to remove the book from his belt. Belt books were very common in Germany and Holland during the 15th and first half of the 16th centuries. The book with the photo was made in 1508, and in 1589, an outer leather cover with a knot was attached to it, thus turning it into a belt. The oldest pyramid in the world. The Gunan Patan Pyramid, located on the Indonesian island of Java, is considered one of the oldest megalithic structures in the world. No one knew how many thousands of years old it was until recent archaeological excavations. But the excavations turn out to be extremely controversial and scandalous. It is no secret that there are ancient relics at the top of Gunan Patan. However, until very recently, no one guessed that the base of the complex is a very ancient pyramid, which may have been built by several civilizations. It was perfectly camouflaged and did not stand out from the surrounding rock formations. In 2013, Danny Hillman, a geologist by main occupation, began excavations. With the blessing and active support of Indonesian President Susila Bamban Yudhuyono, the Indonesian government organized a whole operation which received the patronic name Red and White Glory. The delicate task of excavating an ancient pyramid involved 500 untrained volunteers. Naturally, this barbarity aroused the indignation of local scientists. In order to get as much done as possible in a short time, Hillman enlisted Indonesian soldiers to work. He took up hacks and began to chop the eastern and western foot of Gunan Patan. Soldiers ruthlessly crushed artifacts of many thousands of years ago. It turned out that in the course of the work, Hillman's wards removed the found poles without photographing them and without documenting their position, retrieving the discovered objects that did not always fix exactly where they were. It looked very strange, at least because Hillman initially spoke about the construction of gun and pattern by representatives of three different civilizations. Excavators hid the discovered artifacts, including coins, ceramics, and metal products. The coins that were found at the Gunan Patan Pyramid were dated to around 5200 BC. It is enough to look into any encyclopedia to understand what an anachronism this looks like. The oldest products of this type that have come down to us were minted in the middle of the first millennium BC. The geologist stated that the age of the upper layer of Gunan Patan found by him is about 3,500 years, the middle 8,000, and the lower from 9,000 to 28,000 years. Hillman suggested that the pyramid was used as a place of worship. The ancient inhabitants of Java performed rituals at its top, and at the base, they equipped many chambers of an incomprehensible purpose. Leave your comments under the video, it helps a lot in promoting the channel, and your subscription and the bell under the video gives the channel strength and confidence in progress. Thanks for your views. Bye, everyone!